built as the first of Britain's large mainline diesel locomotives following the drafting of the controversial modernisation plan of 1955, the English Electric Type 4, later designated Class 40, holds a mixed reception, with detractors branding it as an overweight, underpowered machine that often required assistance from the steam locomotives it intended to replace, while its supporters declare that it was truly the beginning of the UK's entry into the diesel age. The Class 40, as mentioned, was a direct result of the 1955 modernisation plan, the policies of which decreed that all steam traction currently in mainline service with British Railways would be replaced by diesel and electric equivalents on a like-by-like -like basis, each of these prospective classes of diesel locomotive being split into power groups, with Type 1 being for engines with power outputs of between 800 and 1,000 horsepower, Type 2 for 1,001 to 1,499 horsepower, Type 3 being for 1,500 horsepower to 1,999 horsepower, Type 4 being for 2,000 to 2,999 horsepower, and Type 5 for being over 3,000 horsepower. Type 4, also known as Type C, being designated for locomotive designs that would work the heavier express passenger, parcels and freight trains, and would have a power output similar to existing top-link steam locomotives such as the BR Standard Class 7 Britannia Pacifics. One of the potential candidates for building this new locomotive type was the English Electric Company of the Vulcan Foundry in Newton Le Willows on Merseyside, who already had substantial experience in this field and had collaborated in the production of five locomotives, starting with 10,000 for the London Midland and Scottish Railway in 1948 and finishing with 10203 for the southern region of British Railways in 1954. All five of these locomotives being fitted with a 16 cylinder power unit, which had gradually increased in output from 1600 horsepower in 1948 to 2,000 horsepower by 1954, while the company also sported a back catalogue of exported products using similar technology. The British Transport Commission, or BTC, approaching English Electric so as to produce a design based on their latest 10203, but with a revised body shell, which was to take into account suggestions made by design consultant Professor R. D. Russell, with 10 pilot locomotives to be built so as to undergo evaluation prior to a potential order for production. In a similar vein to the prototype English Electric DP-1 Deltic locomotive of 1955, the new Type 4 would adopt a prominent nose, or bonnet, at each end with flat-sided bodywork so as to mimic the iconic cab units of the United States, such as the E and F units and the Alco PA, while the engine was built on a Wong Co Co-1 frame, which meant that it had an unpowered axle at each end to help spread the weight, and six powered axles on two bogies, this feature being required so that the axle weight could be brought down to an acceptable level and had been introduced on the three southern region diesel locomotives, 10201 to 10203, in order to avoid the route restrictions which had been applied to the earlier LMS Coco engines, 10,000 and 10,001, the Type 4s being built to the maximum dimensions possible within the British loading gauge, encompassing a gigantic 69-foot 6-inch length over buffers, while weighing approximately 136 tonnes, these engines being capable of achieving 90 miles an hour in service, with the pilot batch, numbered D200 to D209, being outshopped in all over green with a white grey band at cantrail level and flanked at each end with head code discs as per the practice of contemporary steam engines, though these were illuminated by electric lamps fitted behind rather than oil lamps used on steam traction, steam heated boilers also being provided within the locomotives so as to make them compatible with older forms of coaching stock and were provided with their associated water tanks and external fillers. Entering service on the eastern region from March 1958, the premier locomotive, D200, was allocated to Stratford Depot in East London on what was formerly the Great Eastern Main Line, the remaining pilot locomotives being either allocated to the Great Eastern route out of London Liverpool Street or the East Coast Main Line out of King's Cross, which saw these engines based at Hornsey Depot in North London, the former Great Eastern Line management making the most of its new acquisitions and put them to work with much publicity and promotion on principal expresses to Ipswich and Norwich. The Type 4s being immediately hailed a huge success, and were subsequently re-diagrammed to include their use on the Flying Scotsman service from King's Cross to Edinburgh, so as to replace Gresley Pacific steam locomotives, as well as the Master Cutler from Sheffield, Victoria, to London King's Cross, which had recently been diverted away from the former London extension of the Great Central. The BTC, impatient for the mass replacement of steam by diesel traction, changing their original policy of pilot locomotives to instead see vast orders being placed with classes of engines that had not been able to fully prove themselves in service the Type 4s being no exception, as the BTC commissioned a further 190 units to be assembled at the Vulcan foundry. The speed at which English Electric could deliver these locomotives being so formidable, 
that the first production version was completed in May 1959, only eight months after the final example of the prototype batch was delivered. There were, however, many problems with the Type 4s despite their impressive size, specifically the issues of their incredible weight and lack of power to haul it. The English Electric 16VT Mark II Prime Mover, producing 2,000 horsepower, struggling to get the 136-ton Type 4 underway even when it was running light engine, much less when hauling service trains of up to and over 500 tons, meaning that, in many cases, the Type 4s had to be piloted by various steam engines that the diesels had been developed to replace, including Britannia Pacifics and even BR Standard 9F freight locomotives, while other major issues with the Type 4s was their questionable reliability early on, though much of this could be owed to the fact that, as the first diesel locomotives accommodated by various depots and sheds across the network, a lack of general experience maintaining these engines, together with having to be stabled under the same roof as soot-covered steam locomotives, meant the sensitive mechanics of the Type 4s were difficult to operate by engine crews more accustomed to working on steam traction, the biggest bone of contention for the early Type 4s being their train heating boilers, as, like with other early diesels that employed this system of heating, they were complicated to operate and required strict maintenance to ensure reliability. Sadly, these various factors, which weren't entirely the fault of the Type 4, had smeared the locomotive's name even before its first year of operation was completed, as in the late autumn of 1958, out of 10 days allocated for the Flying Scotsman to be hauled by a Type 4, a working example could only be found for four of those days, while on those days the Type 4 was able to haul the Scotsman, its woefully underpowered engine meant it struggled to maintain the diagrams of Gresley's venerable steam-powered Pacifics, and thus required the service to be deputised by a steam engine, while the Master Cutler, now fully refreshed following its transfer to King's Cross Station, was intended to be the top priority run for Type 4s as the new face of diesel traction on the eastern region, though the Shedmaster at Hornsey could not guarantee that a Type 4 would be available for this service, and thus it rarely was during those early days, with continued failures seeing the management consider the possibility of arranging a rescue steam locomotive to be kept on standby at Sheffield, Victoria, so as to spring into action and rescue the Master Cutler should the Type 4 hauling it break down. While the most notable embarrassment for the Type 4s took place on November 1, 1958, when, only one day after D-209 had failed at Newcastle while hauling the Flying Scotsman, D-207 failed prior to leaving King's Cross with the Scotsman, thus requiring D-208 to replace it, only for that locomotive to subsequently break down later in the journey, reliability figures for the Type 4s sitting at an abysmal 71.5-79%, to 79%, and would pervade throughout the entire first year of Type 4 operation and almost to the beginning of 1960. It wasn't all doom and gloom for the Type 4s though, as while the eastern region management were less than impressed with the locomotive's performance, hope came when D210 to D236 was sent to the West Coast Main Line for trials, so as to provide a stopgap measure while electrification of the route was undertaken between 1959 and 1965, during which they were found to work exceptionally well on the high-speed runs out of London Euston to Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool and Preston. Type 4s being subsequently allocated to Wilston and Crewe North Shed, with some members being christened the names of famous ocean liners from the Cunard Line, the Canadian Pacific Line, and the Elder Dempster Line, the remaining class members being allocated to the Eastern, Northeastern, and Scottish regions, with the full build-out of Type 4s being completed in September 1962, with the final example, D399, being allocated to Gateshead Depot on Tyneside, rounding out a production run of 200 units. Visual differences between the class being primarily down to the choice of head code display at the front of each unit, the initial pilot batch having disc head codes, and later batches being fitted with four character route indicators split with two characters each side of the connecting nose doors, followed in the late 1960s by the decision to remove the connecting nose door and instead replace it with a rectangular four character head code box. Ultimately, the Type 4's place as the premier diesel locomotive didn't last long, as with their endemic flaws still causing various problems, a new fleet of more reliable and powerful engines needed to be brought in to deliver the results desired by the modernization plan when it came to replacing steam. Type 4s being first abandoned by the East Coast Main Line, when in June 1961, the last of these units were taken off roster in favour of the brand new English Electric Type 5 Deltics and their smaller Baby Deltic Type 3s, while the Flying Scotsman was handed back to Gresley Pacifics until the Deltics had been fully run in prior to their takeover. All Hornsey-based Type 4s being transferred en masse to Stratford in October 1961, to work diagrams out of London Liverpool Street, though even here the Type 4s wouldn't last long, as while they saw work on various freights and the heaviest passenger workings by the end of 1963, 
From 1965, the new and more powerful Brush Type 4s took over on prime East Anglia passenger services, and the Type 4s were eventually transferred away in August 1967 to serve on the West Coast Main Line. Again, following the pattern of their short stints in frontline service, West Coast Main Line operations were again temporary, as by the mid-1960s, the line from London Euston to Manchester, Liverpool and Birmingham had been electrified with 25 kilovolt overhead wires. And with the likes of the AL1 to AL6 coming into service, providing 100 mile an hour high speed operations throughout, the Type 4s were pushed north to work on the non-electrified sections of the route, beyond Crewe to Preston, Carlisle and Glasgow Central. This work coming to an end in 1967, following the introduction of a new English electric Type 4, the flat-fronted D400s, later designated Class 50s, which were far more powerful and worked in pairs so as to match the potential timetabling of dedicated electrics once the wires had been extended to Glasgow, the last high-end work for Type 4s being on the Trans-Pennine service between Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, York, Newcastle and Hull. But even then, by the end of the decade, these had once again been displaced by the arrival of extremely powerful though exceptionally heavy Solzer Type 4s, later designated Class 45s and 46s thus pushing the Type 4s, designated under TOPS as Class 40s, onto secondary passenger workings around the north of England and Scotland. The North Wales run between Crewe and Holyhead being their stronghold well into the 1970s and 80s, while the last routine passenger operations for Class 40s north of the border were Haymarket-based services in the Highlands of Scotland, which ultimately came to an end in 1980. Beyond their dwindling passenger work, caused primarily by their inability to heat new forms of coaching stock with electric train heating systems or ETH, the Class 40s found a second life in the role of freight engines. Being much loved on various forms of cargo haulage in the Midlands, the Northwest, the Northeast and Scotland, the more generous and slow-moving timetables for freight traffic, meaning these engines could trundle along sedately without having to overburden their underpowered engines. Although by the mid-1970s, as the 1973 economic recession caused a major drop in demand that hit the BR freight sector hard, the Class 40s continued to find less and less work as the decade progressed. While their more sustained use on merry-go-round coal runs serving the various power stations of England, Wales and Scotland were rapidly superseded by the Class 56 and Class 58, with the first planned withdrawals having started in January 1976, with D239, 243, 302, 389 and 390 being taken out of service, with several life-expired locos scrapped as they became due for classified works overhaul along with some accident-damaged examples, though the poor reliability of even new classes, such as the infamous Romanian-built Class 56s, meant Class 40s could stay online with a minimum level of work and could even undergo overhauls again. In 1980, a fleet rundown program was announced, along with the planned scrapping of many older locos of other types, a list being drafted that highlighted engines with high engine hours and vacuum-only train brakes, which prevented them from hauling more modern air-braked freight wagons and passenger coaches while additional locomotive withdrawals were made based on major component failures, with engines often being retired out of sequence due to the cost of repairs, regardless of their last overhaul date, with other examples being simply switched off, despite the fact that they were still in serviceable condition. The Class 40s, while now facing their inevitable demise, still finding routine work on both freight and passenger services, the latter of which saw them maintain their annual stranglehold on summer holiday trains to various locations, alongside other relief workings and excursions, with a typical Saturday during the August of 1982, seeing 19 passenger workings diagrammed for Class 40 haulage, serving destinations including Manchester, Leeds, Lundudno, Skegness, York, Scarborough, Bangor, Holyhead, Blackpool and Newcastle. While prior to their final withdrawal, Class 40s were generally centred around the London Midland region, with ex-Great Eastern and Scottish units relocated to the Midlands by October 1981. By 1985, the vast majority of the Class 40 fleet had been withdrawn, with disposals taking place at either Swindon, Crewe or Doncaster Works. Although four units, 40012, 40060, 40118 and 4135, were reinstated during April and May 1985 for departmental use as part of the remodelling of Crewe Station. Though despite the temporary nature of their return to service, the engines, regardless of their general lack of maintenance and attention, continued in service after the work at Crewe was finished hauling local ballast and freight trains, and even assisting the odd passenger train failure. Before the last of these four units, X40060, now renumbered to the departmental 97405, was withdrawn in March 1987, the final operational Class 40 in British Rail service being Class Pioneer D200, now numbered 4122, which had initially been withdrawn in August 1981 and threatened with scrapping when the National Railway Museum, 
stated they had no interest in preserving the machine, only for a campaign by staff of the Rail Enthusiast magazine to see this engine reinstated into mainline traffic during April 1983, using donor parts provided by scrapped classmate 40076, the engine being cosmetically restored to its original dark Brunswick green livery with full yellow ends, and carried both the numbers D200 and 40122, before finally meeting its end on April 16, 1988, with a farewell rail tour, after which the locomotive was handed over to the National Railway Museum nearly 30 years to the day after it had first entered service. Despite the checkered history of the Class 40s, though, these locomotives were able to garner some notoriety, with one specific engine, D326, later numbered 4126, being considered as something of a cursed engine, as it met with a vast slew of accidents and other unfortunate events throughout its career. The first being on Boxing Day 1962, when the locomotive, hauling the southbound midday Scott, smashed into the back of a Liverpool to Birmingham Express due to driver error, killing 18 passengers and injuring 33, while more famous was the engine's involvement in the great train robbery of August 8, 1963, during which the engine, hauling an overnight southbound postal on the West Coast main line, was halted at Leadburn in Buckinghamshire by a gang of 15 men who stole from the HVP or High Value Packages coach between 2.5 and 3 million pounds, or 38 million pounds in 2023, though despite the audacity of the crime, most of the gang were promptly rounded up, while the engine driver, Jack Mills, who had been beaten over the head with a metal bar, would suffer the effects of the attack for the remainder of his life, passing away from an unrelated illness in 1970, 4126's cursed existence continuing after the robbery, as during 1965, the engine suffered total brake failure on the approach to Birmingham New Street, though the efforts of a quick-thinking signalman saw the engine diverted into a different platform, where it ran into the back of a freight train, injuring only the guard. 4126 being ultimately withdrawn on February 15, 1984, and offered for preservation by the National Railway Museum due to its part in the Great Train Robbery, though the museum was ultimately disinterested, and this unusual engine immediately scrapped at Doncaster Works, apparently to avoid it being stripped by souvenir hunters. Ultimately, seven Class 40s and one cab end survived into preservation. Class Premier D200, D212 Oriole, D213 Andania, D306 Atlantic Conveyor, D318, D335, and D345, together with the cab of D288. All of these locomotives, with the exception of D318, having run in preservation, while three locomotives have seen a return to the main line, including D200, D213, and D345, the latter two of which are currently mainline registered, with D213 being outshopped in BR Green with head code discs, while D345, better known as 4145, has been christened the name East Lancashire Railway, and currently wears BR Green with a box head code. 4145 having the most proficient career in preservation on the main line, and has been a regular performer across the network on various rail tours, and is now currently on hire to West Coast Railways. In the end, the Class 40, while an icon of Britain's early moves into diesel traction during the late 1950s and early 1960s, is a class of locomotive that is often forgotten when compared to more venerable classes, such as the Deltics, Westerns and Warships, primarily due to the fact that it spent very little time in a frontline role because of its many design flaws and operational concerns, which rapidly led to its transfer onto the humdrum work of freight and secondary passenger roles, the Class 40s, in principle, being sturdy, strong machines that plied their trade well, but were perhaps too over-engineered for the roles they intended to fill. Though regardless of their mixed reception, these pioneering diesels continue to hold a soft spot in the hearts of enthusiasts as truly the point where Britain entered the diesel age.